So, uh, welcome everybody to episode uh, five of the X plus Y Factor. Uh, I'm Paul Levy. I've got some uh, guests today uh, from uh, Lancaster University Management School, and we're going to talk about the joint degrees that we have between uh, the Maths and Stats Department and uh, various bits of the Management School. So, uh, I'll ask uh, the three of you to introduce yourselves. Uh, first of all, uh, Adam. Okay, yeah, my name's uh, Adam Hindle. I'm a, I'm a lecturer in what might be called business analytics or operational research. Um, I'm a teaching fellow here at LUMS, uh, and I'm also the admissions tutor for the Morse degree and the business analytics degree. Thank you. Okay, Andrew. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Smurden. Um, so I'm from accounting and finance. I'm a teaching fellow. Uh, my main area of focus is financial accounting. Um, and uh, that's mainly for final year undergraduate students as well as first year undergraduates as well. OK, thank you. Hilary? Hello, my name's Hilary Ingham. I'm senior lecturer in the economics department in the management school. I'm also part two director of studies, which means I'm responsible for looking after the second years and the final year students. I teach second year microeconomic analysis and that is taken by a lot of students on the joint degrees with maths and also the Morse programme. OK, thank you. So, um, yeah, one thing I forgot to say at the beginning is uh, this video will be of interest uh, potentially to people who are considering applying to one of these degrees uh, for entry in 2021. But also if you're already an offer holder for one of these degrees, uh, then uh, you might be interested in just sort of seeing uh, what we've got to say about them. Uh, so we've got economics, uh, accounting and finance, and then uh, sort of management, which is responsible for the Morse degree. Um, and we'll talk about uh, the specific degrees a little bit later. Um, but what I'm going to do is just sort of sort of play dumb uh, now uh, and ask you to sort of explain uh, at a very sort of basic level what the subjects are about. I think most people know what maths is, uh, but not everybody will have studied economics or finance or anything like that. So uh, should we go in reverse order from what we did uh, the first time around? So Hilary, can you sort of explain at a basic level what, what economics is and what it's about? Yeah, certainly. So in terms of economics, then, um, when you join Lancaster, some people taking economics will have studied it at school and some will not. That makes no difference um, if you haven't done it, as long as you've got a sort of interest on what's going on in the world. And if you take what's happening now with this COVID-19, you know, people are losing their jobs, uh, the state is paying people not to work. Uh, the economy is going into recession, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the sort of issues that you would be looking at. So in terms of how the subject itself is delivered, it basically splits down the middle. So you would start by studying what we call microeconomics, which, as the name suggests, looks at rather small issues within the economy, such that those that relate to individual firms, individual households and individual consumers I, you know, should I go to work? Should I stay at home and engage in childcare instead? Uh, if I'm a firm, should I increase prices? And then in the second part of the course, you move on to macroeconomics, where you're looking at economy wide type issues like, you know, what should the government do to combat unemployment? Should it raise taxes to pay for the money spent during this pandemic? So, bigger issues, if you like. So, that is basically in a bite-sized sentence, what we do in economics. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK, uh, Andrew, uh, talk about accounting and finance. OK, absolutely. So um, you get different types of accountants and different kinds of finance professionals. And so accountants, uh, not a lot of students will have perhaps studied accounting and finance before, but um, accountants are uh, can often be business advisors. We can be responsible pro for preparing sets of company accounts. So effectively saying where you spend your money, where you've got your money from and how much money you've got in various different places like in the bank, in your house, in etc. Um, you've also got sort of more internal type of accountants who, as well who provide more um, advice and guidance to businesses about the types of decisions in terms of where they might want to invest money, where they might want to raise money from. And you've also got um, sort of finance professionals as well. Think about investment banks and, and sort of insurance companies. And so there's a broad range of different roles that you can do if you're an accountant or a finance professional. 
and if you were to do one of the joint degrees, you would study uh, both accounting and finance. Um, you would start off by studying pure financial accounting, which is where we look at how do you record the transactions that a business actually undertakes. And it's literally the recording of every transaction, whether it be a, a sort of an expense, whether it be an income, whether it be a purchase of an asset or the, the sort of incurring of a liability. So we do that first. Then the second thing that we move on to is more a sort of a finance um, type arena. So thinking about where do businesses get their money from and how do they decide where to actually invest that money? So where you've got multiple different projects, how do you decide which of those projects to invest in? And then the final thing that you would look at, particularly in your first year, would be uh, looking at sort of the analysis of the underlying performance of companies. Because once you produce financial statements, you can actually compare the performance of different companies within the same industry, across different industries, um, etc. And so you'd explore all of those sorts of areas in, in your first year. And as you move into your second and third year, you would get to experience each of those in different levels of detail. OK, thank you. Right. Finally, Adam. Uh, so uh, I was going to ask you what operations research is. And I think just before we started, I, I, I said, is it the same as business analytics? And you said, not quite. So I, I don't know whether you also want to say what business analytics is or. OK, so um, we have a sort of bit of an issue with the naming of the topic. Whoever named the topic um, kind of missed the ball a bit. Um, we, we've got operations research, which is the, the American version of operational research. Mm -hmm. And this is obviously the OR in, in the Morse acronym. Now, business analytics is, in a sense, is the new name for operational research. There are slight, slight differences with it in terms of analytics is perhaps a little bit more data driven, a little bit more big data and digging into big data sets in order to identify clusters and patterns and so on. So it's, it's more sort of data driven is business analytics. Operational research is perhaps more of the modeling side of it. So it's to do with things like creating simulation models or optimization models or trying to capture reality in some way and then experiment with that model to try to find better solutions. Um, we also have management science, which is the name of the actual department that I'm in, which in a sense is bigger still, which is any kind of sort of mathematical or logical or technical approach to analyzing decisions. So we have a few sort of ways of describing this. For all intents and purposes, you can use these three terms interchangeably. There's not a, necessarily a big problem there. Um, in terms of what a student would do, think of it as like the application side of mathematics or the application side of statistics. In other words, how do we use our mathematics and statistical and economic type skills out there in the real world to solve problems? So, for example, if you wanted to if you wanted to go and work for a supermarket, you can decide how, where, where to build your supermarket, how big it should be, where, how many of each particular product you should have. You can analyze deeper and deeper into the problem and try to build a model of that. Other areas, for example, say in the airline industry, you might be looking at how to schedule planes so that you essentially maximize the throughput of an, of an airport or indeed maximize the income from the airport. So there's all sorts of different ways that we can look at the real world and try to transform it into a model and then do some experimenting with it to try and come up with a good solution. So it's used in all sorts of areas, lots of different ways. And again, we try and take mathematics type, technical type students and basically bounce them off the real world to make them useful. OK. Thank you. Uh, great. OK, so what I'm going to do now is uh, put a slide up which has uh, the uh, the degrees uh, that we're talking about. So if I can just find uh, here it is. Uh, so uh, slideshow, we might as well have a slideshow from the beginning. OK, so we've got four um, kind of degree uh, sort of titles um, and here they are listed. We've got economics and mathematics, accounting, finance and maths, uh, financial maths and Morse that Adam was just talking about. And all four of these degrees are available as a bachelor degree, so BSc degree. Um, and there's also an option to do each of them with um, 
uh, a year in industry or a replacement year it would be called uh, for financial maths. Um, and the, only one of these is actually available as an MSI degree, so an integrated master's degree, and that's financial maths. Um, although we haven't had very many people uh, do that, they tend to sort of just do the BSCs. But so the, there's a sort of similarity to these four degrees, aren't there? And what, what I've done is, is summarise the approximate content on the right hand side, which is roughly what you would expect uh, the content uh, based on the title is roughly what you would expect the content to be. Uh, so we've got economics and maths, um, which is uh, at least after the first year is uh, is one half economics and one half maths. Uh, accounting, finance and maths, which um, needs a little bit of, uh, of economics, um, uh, which is taken in the first year. Uh, financial maths, which is kind of similar, uh, but there's the the maths is is slightly more in the foreground than it would be for the accounting, finance, and maths, and that's a degree which is based in so it's run by the maths and stats department rather than the the accounting and finance uh, department. And then finally, Morse that you've been talking about, Adam, which is which is a mix of uh, maths and stats uh, operation. Did I should I have said operational research? If, if you're American, then you're operations research. Right. Okay. So I should have. UK, then it's yeah, it's it's, it's got an operational AL, yeah. research. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and economics. So it's a mix of uh, of all of those things. So there's some similarity between these, isn't there? But there's uh you know that the there's some overlap between them, but they they're going in slight, slightly different directions. OK, so that's uh, slide one. Um, and uh, so what I'm just going to do in order to sort of explain what the content of these is, um, is to um, first of all introduce some key part one modules. Um, that, and these will be listed in the content on the next slide. So um, the, the one in economics which comes up, this is principles of economics um, A, which has the module mnemonic Econ 101. Um, and that is uh, Hillary referred to microeconomics and macroeconomics. Um, and uh, I thought I understood uh, roughly what those were. And I, I looked at the description uh, of the module and decided maybe I didn't understand quite as well as I thought what uh, what microeconomics and macroeconomics were. Um, in in maths, we've got uh, now there are some economic other economics modules in the first year, but as far as I can tell, they kind of overlap uh, either with this Econ 101 or with some maths. Um, so in, on the math side, there are two, um, they're not modules, they're streams of modules, but they're the same value. One is called mathematical methods, and that's math 100. And uh, the other one is mathematical concepts, and that's math 110. And math students, single major students would take both of these in the first year, and then one other subject. In accounting and finance, we've got ACF 100, Introduction to Accounting and Finance. And uh, and I think that the, the three areas um, uh, that Andrew referred to are uh, financial accounting, managerial finance, and then this financial statement analysis. And like economics, there are some other er things in, uh, you know, modules in accounting and finance, but they have some overlap uh, with uh, either this this module or with Math 100. And then operations research uh, for 2020 entry um, uh, students on on the Morse uh, degree would take this MSI 101, which is statistics and computing for management, which involves uh, various kind of uh, techniques and tools. Um, and they would also take this MSI 103, which is the introduction to what operational research is. Um, and that's going to change slightly for 2021. But, but I guess, Adam, it's not going to change fundamentally. It's just the way it's organized, which is likely to, to change. Yeah. OK, um, so those are the basic modules uh, that we've got. Um, and then uh, the reason I've introduced those is to summarize the part one content of these degrees. Um, and the part one content is as written on this uh, this page here. So Econ 101, Math 100 and a minor for economics and math. So so Hillary, um, have you got any insight into what kind of things uh, students on on, let's say, economics generally would take as minors? Um, um, quite often, I mean, we have a lot of students who would take uh, an accounting and finance course. That that's very popular with ours. Um, other courses in the the management school, uh, such as marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. The other ones that are quite popular are some of the social science courses, like politics, for example, or international relations. Um, the, the other thing it, it is worth people 
thinking about when they look at that slide if they're interested in Lancaster is you can see because those part ones are quite similar dependent on the miners you pick you do get quite a lot of flexibility after the first year yeah so so for example if you were a more student with econ 101 math 101 and, and man sci those modules there and you wanted to move to economics for year two that would almost certainly be possible likewise if one of our economics and math students chose the man sci as their minor then they would be able to move the other way to more yeah. So, you know, or indeed to a, a straight economics degree. So that so although, you know, you, you would enter into part one on a specific degree scheme, you do have flexibility at the end of your first year if you find, you know, for example, you might never have done operational research before, but you might find that is what you really like and you'd prefer to move to Morse as opposed to staying on economics and maths, for example. So yeah. that's those are options. Yeah, so and I guess probably you could go the other day, you could go, for example, from accounting and finance, accounting, finance and maths to economics and maths because you've done Econ 101. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so and, and the economics and maths is the one which has this flexibility that a, a single major student would always have to, you know, choose a minor, which is not in their major subjects. But for a lot of the joint honours degrees, in fact, because you're studying two subjects, you get you lose that flexibility. But economics and math does have that that flexibility built into it. Uh, but in any case, there's a, you know there's a, you can you can chop and change relatively easily between a lot of these. Uh, so in accounting and finance, accounting, finance and maths, as we said, that that would more lead over to possibly changing over to one of the other management school degrees. Um, financial maths, you could switch to single maths at the end of that first year. Uh, so because you've done the same amount of maths as a as a first year uh, math student uh, and in fact this combination of modules ACF 100 math 100 and math 110 that could easily be the modules taken by a single major math student uh, and then we've got at the bottom we've got this uh, Morse which is um, uh, has got math 100 uh, econ 101 and then uh, some combination of things which are uh, in 2020 is this MSI modules and there'll be a new module in 2021 but it's giving you the, the the business analytics or the operational research side of things okay and then uh, part two content um, the the all of these degrees have a kind of core content in year two which is the core in both say economics at on the one hand and maths on the other hand um, and uh, uh, or again, ACF and maths, you're doing the core in ACF, obviously in the core in maths, and you tend to have some sort of options available in the third year, uh, don't you? So you referred to the sort of optionality later on. And I think that the general model is in the third year, you get much more freedom to choose what you're uh, what you're doing. Is that, uh, that's probably true across all of these degrees. Is that, uh, would you agree with that? Well, I think the People viewing at home won't be able to see, but you are nodding your head. All they can see is my PowerPoint yeah, slide. Um, uh, it, 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 for economics and maths, for example, I mean, we would normally uh, recommend that you do one micro course and one macro course in year two, because that doesn't give you any constraints in mm -hmm. final year. And uh, then you would take another two modules of your choosing. But on the economic side, uh, in final year, and this would be true both for the economics and maths degree and the Morse degree, we don't have any courses that you must take. We have total right, flexibility. Right. You can choose yeah. from anything we've got on offer. Okay, now there's one uh, degree here which is slightly different, which is the, the Morse one, uh, where uh, unlike the other three where you have to do 50 and 50, um, in Morse you've got, uh, you can sort of choose options according to your preference in the final year. Uh, so, um, so that that's the the difference with that, Adam. Have you? Um... Yeah, I mean, obviously, with with a Morse degree, you, you must cover three core um, subjects in the sense of maths and stats is one, operational research is two, and economics is three. So, in years one and two, there isn't really that much flexibility or, or sort of freedom to choose other modules because you've got quite a lot you need to cover. So that's in years one and two. But in year three, you've got basically free choice in terms of which modules you choose in the management school. So if you wanted to stay, for example, on a maths sort of pathway, you could do that. You could fill your year three with lots of maths. 
Likewise, you could go down the economics route or you could, you could go down the middle, which is the operational research. And you'd be set up really well with your first two years to be able to, to potentially um, customize in that way. And, and I was just going to say LUMS is very strong on this. LUMS gives you lots of flexibility in terms of module choices. So you can customize your degree as you develop, as you find the things that you're good at, find the things that you enjoy, um, but also grow up a bit. You know, you're, you're changing and you're learning and, and so on. So keep that in mind for all of these degrees that LUMS mm -hmm. is very good at being able to, to, to customize and, 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 and find the pathway that suits you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's quite good. Now I'm going to take a uh, have an interlude here. I'm going to give you, or well, I'm going to try. This is also me experimenting with a with a a, a writing tablet. Uh, I'm going to give you a a test in mathematical symbols. So to see which of the the subjects that we've got, and which of the three the OR, economics and accounting and finance is the most mathematical of the of the of subjects. So meaning you use similar notation. So can you all see the, the OneNote uh, screen that I've got? Yeah. Yeah. OK. My first degree was psychology, by the way, so I'm okay. right at, it's a disadvantage already. <laughs> OK, should I start, start with something easy then? So uh, Let's see if I can can draw. All right. What's that? Sigma. Sigma. Sorry? Sigma. Epsilon. epsilon. Very good. Yeah. OK. So that's the Greek letter Epsilon. OK. What's that? Uh, sorry, I've written that. It looks exactly the same, doesn't it? It looks like it? a psi. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a psi. OK, what about... Uh, therefore. Thank you very much. Yes, the triangle is a therefore. What about this one? Two footprints in the snow. It's an upside down therefore. Do you know what it means? Because. Ooh. Because, very good, yes. Wow. OK, so we're doing pretty well. So the... Um, can you draw them a bit higher up? They're going underneath my control bar. I'll, I'll, I'll try and... How's, how's this? They're oh. greater than or equal to. I was uh, too early. My directional. Has anybody got that? Um, no. OK, I think time's run out. So that we've, we've found something that you do. That's if and only if. That's a mathematical symbol for if and only if. OK, right. We had a little bit, a little bit of fun with that and I didn't really count any scores. So um, I'll say you all, all equal came out as equally mathematical. Um, OK, uh, right now we ta I talked a little bit about placements. I I'm not sure uh, how much uh, connection uh, the three of you have with the placement side of things. Um, placements are something that Maths and Stats has been running for, I think, uh, three or four years now in the sense that we created the scheme around about three or four, four years ago. And that was based on the management school, actually. This has been something the uh, management school has been running for a lot longer. Um, and all of these uh, degrees have this option to do the third year. In the management school, it's called brackets industry. And That's in, right. in the maths and stats department, it's brackets placement year. I have no idea why the terminology is different, but there's this uh, kind of option. Um, and uh, this is sort of moderately popular in maths and stats. Um, so is it something that you, you have much experience with, any of you in, the, in your departments? I mean, I, I can tell you that in economics, um, I mean, our business economics programme, the default is an industry year. Uh, I was actually instrumental myself and James Groves actually set up the economics and maths industry um, version. It isn't done by many. I, I think we, we actually had our first graduate this year. Um, so I, I'd say no more than a, the handful per year. What I can say is that the actual industrial placement for the maths and economics students, it's probably the same for all of the programmes you're talking about, is run by Faculty of Science and Technology. 
Okay. So it's your faculty that, that find the placements for the, even though the economics of math students are majors in the economics department, we, we administer it. Right. FST actually do the placements. Right, okay, so the, the faculty that maths is part of is more, more involved in that. Yeah, I mean, the placements for the for these joint degrees are not guaranteed. You have to apply for them, right? You have to find the placement yourself. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, the, and if you, but in maths, we've got a pretty good success rate. I mean, the, I think this year there were uh, uh, six out of eight students found a placement, um, and only one of those was cancelled because of COVID. Um, so and the five that weren't cancelled were in finance I, and I sort of mentioned this as a, as a statistic the one that was cancelled was Airbus so it's obviously a different kind of branch of, of the economy and uh, I think the fi finance is less affected and maybe people can work at home a bit more and so on but um, uh, so um, that's certainly something that a lot of people kind of consider as an option. Uh, yeah I mean if, if I could jump in I mean the in terms of business analytics degrees and the Morse degree roughly half of all applicants go for the industry right so I sell it to them quite considerably on the open days uh, it works it works for both sides it works for the industry side and it works for the student side because the student gains a lot of experience in year three goes out to work sees what's actually happening out there sees how the you know the skills that they're learning at university can be applicable sees how valuable they are so but also the, the industry gets to in a sense check them out and, and find out whether this person is a good fit for their organization so students often come back in year four finish off their year four often better than the normal students would do in their final year because again they're just they're just you know, essentially an upper notch in terms of their skill set, but then go straight back out and work for the company that they were on placement with. So the company, the organization essentially checks out the student. If it likes what it sees, then it offers them a job at the end of it. So it's a really good push and pull situation with both parties gaining. And the, the best marks that we find on the business analytics and the Morse degree are coming from people who've done that industry variant, because when they come back in year four, they're just they're just absolutely on the ball. You can tell you can tell that they're different as a result of the, their experience out in, in the real world. Yeah. Well, you've also got the experience of just applying in the first place, right? I mean, the, the, quite apart from actually working, you, you're getting to grips with how you would enter the labour market in the first place. So, so yeah. yeah. And all of the applicants get places on business analytics, all of them. Right. OK. No, it's not quite all, all of maths, but so, you're, yeah. So you, you sold, sold your side of things quite well. well. I mean, there is a team within LUMS, within the management school, who help yeah. you manage that process. So don't think that you're going to be on your own trying to find yourself right. a placement and sort of like walking through the wilderness. No, there's, there's a big network here that, that does that. And LUMS has got really good connections with industry, all sorts of big players from the blue chips right through to, to, to smaller sort of public sector type organisations locally. There's all sorts there that you can go and um, find your placement in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's pretty. It's certainly been pretty successful for us uh, since we introduced it. Okay, um, so um, as I said, this uh, this show is probably uh, useful for people who've already got an offer on one of these degrees, because apart from anything, it tells you about the kind of flexibility that you might have if you wanted to switch into something. Um, you know, if you've got an offer for twenty twenty study, uh, things are probably going to look a bit different in 2020 21 uh, than they will uh, they would normally but we're reasonably confident that they'll be returned to normal for the 2021 year onwards uh, and so uh, certainly those people who are applying for 2021 onwards uh, you know that's the, the the basic model that we talked about is uh, you know is what they can they can expect if you've got any questions um, that you can uh, well I'll put some links in the description of the video for people to email if they want to ask any questions about any of these degrees uh, and so um, thank you very much uh, Adam Andrew and Hillary uh, and I'm sure I'll see you uh, perhaps uh, at an open day uh, later in the summer or at some event uh, like that uh, uh, thanks a lot and uh, have a nice summer okay okay thanks bye, bye. bye.